This sermon is brought to you by Change Makers, an international assembly of the Apostolic Church, New Jersey, where we are molding lives to fulfill destinies. We pray the word of God replenishes your soul, launching you into the good works he prepared just for you. Stay tuned. I'm a change maker. of Jesus. Jesus. Let's lift his name on high. Say, Jesus. 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 Oh, Jesus. Oh, we lift your name on high. Come on in, somebody. Sing it, Jesus. Call upon the name Yahweh. Say Yahweh. 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 Oh, what a mighty God you are, Yahweh. like this we shall lift up our hands we shall open up our hearts with everything that's within and we shall give it all to him for his name is Yahweh and in moments like this we will sing out a song we will sing out a love song to Jesus under the bulls yes Lord my under the bulls I'll sing out a song I'll sing out a love song To Jesus 
in moments like this, I'll lift up my hands, I'll lift up my hands to the Lord, sing it From the top, in moments like this, come on, somebody sing out the song. Love song to Jesus. In moments like this, I'll sing out. Oh yes, Lord. Let's lift it up. Let's lift it up. Sing. somewhere somebody is dying but you and I we have life we are alive you just spoke to somebody some few minutes ago but that person is in the ER but you and I we are alive we are well and kicking so why wouldn't we open our mouth and say we love you Lord Come on, let's do it together. Sing it. I love you, Lord. From the depths of our heart, we say to you, Lord. With all that's within us, Lord. With all that's within us, Lord. We say we love you, Lord. With everything within us. Love 
love you. We love you. We love you. We love you with every breath within us. We love you with every fiber within us, oh God. With every fiber within us, oh Lord. We say we love you and we thank you and we bless you and we lift your name, oh Lord. Hey. My brother, just play something on them. Come on. I want you to fix your mind. Just think about the goodness of the Lord. When the doctor says that you have only a few weeks to live, his mercy says, No, I will connect you. I will lift you up and say you will not die but you will live to declare his words so you see the reason why you have to say that you love him the reason why we say we love him when we see all that he's doing for us no words no money not our mind not our intelligence can even repay. So from the depths of our heart, I want us to sing it one more time. Just tell him how much you love him. Come on, let we go. We ready sing it. Hey. You 
have some preach here. Preach. Your name is Yes, Yahweh. Yes, Yahweh. Come on, somebody lift it up. He's a miracle working God. And his name is Yahweh. Your name is If you believe in the name Yahweh, do you believe in the name Yahweh? Yes. Yahweh, we bless your name. Yahweh, we thank you. Indeed, you are a miracle working God. And tonight, Lord, your children will bow before you. At your feet, we sit, oh God. At your feet, oh God, we sit. Open up thy windows and shower your blessings upon us. Give us your word, oh God. And we know we will be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Let's look at a few words of God and then we will partake. Amen. Amen. If you want to sit down, you can sit down. If you want to stand with me, stand with me. Whatever you want to do, feel comfortable. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I'm not, I'm not actually going to preach. It's going to be more or less like a preaching and a... And a and the, and the teaching. So, you know, pick up your Bibles and then, you know, you can work with me. Hallelujah. Amen. So I'm talking about the power of the communion. The power of the communion. Hallelujah. The power of the communion. Revelation has the power to stir up your spirit. Revelation. Now, you see this thing over the there's a covering on it. When I take whatever is covering there, there's something in there. But right now you can guess what it is, but you don't know exactly what is on that table. But if I take the covering off, it means that I am revealing what is underneath the covering. And it's very important that you understand the purpose of communion. You understand the purpose of communion and why we have communion and why God instructed these ordinances to be done as often as you can. Hallelujah. Revelation has the power to activate your spirit and to give you boldness. Because when you understand the purpose of the communion, when you are coming Every month when we have the communion, you come with boldness. You come with understanding. You are coming with revelation so that whatever you need to get from it, you can walk away from it. There are people who have not experienced the power of the communion in their life. I understand. I have more than one testimony to share with you concerning the power of the communion. If he had no power, God would not have instructed us to do it. So it is my prayer that every individual here in CMI, you will be able to explain the power behind the communion if anybody asks you. So from now to December, every first month, we would learn a little bit about the communion. Now, the word communion comes from the, uh, the Hebrew word koinonia, which means to have partnership to have relationship with somebody it is it is not just to partake just to come and eat but communion means that i am coming to have that intimate relationship we are partners together hallelujah the book of daniel chapter 11 verse 32b says that for they that know their god they shall be strong and they shall do exploits. They that know their God. They that know the word because the word is God. They that get revelation. They shall be strong and they shall do exploits. So if you do not understand why we partake in the communion. And you think that is just a juice and some drink. You are deceiving yourself. So you will come every month and we will have the communion and you will walk away empty whilst others are benefiting from the communion. Hallelujah. 
Now, for us to really go into it, I just want to give us a little backdrop of how we got here and how it all started. The first atonement, atonement is the covering or, or the washing of our sins. The first atonement took place in the Garden of Eden. Hallelujah. Now, the word atonement comes from the Hebrew word kafar, which means to cover. To cover. And the first time that this incident happened was the fall of man in the Garden of Eden. When man fell, God had a purpose. God had a plan to bridge man back. And what the devil was doing, when he caused man to fall, he did not know, he had no idea that God in his infinite power and revelation and authority had already in advance made provision for man to connect man back to what we lost. So the Bible says that when Adam and Eve hid themselves from God and they said that they were naked, the first thing that God did was to kill an animal. And he used the skin of the animal to create an apparel for them. That was the first symbolism of the lamb. The killing of that animal and the shedding of that blood was a sign of an atonement for what they had done. And he covered their nakedness. Hallelujah. So whenever God instructed his people to use the lamp, it was a form of atonement to cover their sins and to cover their faults. In, 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 in Exodus chapter 12, reading from verse 5 to 14. First lady, if you can read that for us. Exodus chapter 12, if you want to open over there. Amen. It is interesting how God, I, I don't know why some, the devil would want to mess around with God anytime. Because he created you and he's the creator of the universe. That is why in, in Genesis chapter 3, he talks about the fact that the seed of the womb is what is, the seed of the woman is what is going to crush your head. But it is interesting that when, when God made that statement, the devil didn't know how God was going to do it. Because whatever God says, he, he doesn't go back against what he said. So he created the universe, he created the heaven, he created the earth, that man will have dominion over the earth. So he said, how could you do this? But God in his divine knowledge and understanding decided that I will come through the matrix of a woman to be able to fulfill what I have said, that man has to have dominion over the earth. That is why when, this, when the devil came to a, a, a deceived man on earth, he had to use a form that is acceptable on earth. That is why he used the serpent. But God always has a way and has a plan for his children. Amen. Book of Exodus. Exodus chapter 12, 5 to 14. The animal you chose must be a year, must be year old, male without defect. And you, and you, and you may take them from the sheep of the goat. Take care of them until the fourteenth day of the month, when all the members of the community of Israel must slaughter them at twilight. Then they are to take some of the blood and put it on the side and on and top of the door frame of the house where. They eat the lamp. Eight. That same night, they are to eat the meat roasted over the fire, along with bitter leaf, with bitter herb, and bread, and made without yeast. Do not eat the meat raw or boiled in water, but roast it over a fire with the head, legs, and internal organs. Do not leave any of it till morning. If some is left till morning, 
you must bend them. This is how you are to eat it. You will clock. This is how you are to eat it. With your clock tucked into your belt, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. Eat it hasty. It is the Lord's Passover. 12. On that same night, I will pass through Egypt and strike down every firstborn, both people and animal. And I will bring judgment on all the gods of Egypt. I, I the Lord. The blood will be a sign for your, for you on the on your houses, where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. No, no distinct plague will touch you when I strike Egypt. Fourteen. This is the day you are to commemorate from generations to come. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord, a lasting ordinance. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you. I want us to focus on the, on the blood and the lamb. So God instructed the Israelites that on this very day, pick up a lamb with no defect. Pick up a lamb or a goat with no defect clean for 14 days prepare that animal and then slaughter that animal and they use the blood on your doorpost so that when i come when the angel of death come when i come at night and i see the mark on your doorpost i will pass by and no plague will affect you now if god is the same yesterday today and forever and change it not and then at the end of the day, he says that, now continue to do this, commemorate what I have told you, continue to do it every time to remember what I did and how I spared your life in Egypt. I always say that I believe that there were probably some Egyptians who saw them doing it and said, can you mark my doorpost also? And indeed, he would have spared them. I'm building a foundation for you to understand that the power that was able to preserve, that was able to protect the Israelite in Egypt, that power has not been lost. As a matter of fact, we'll get to a point where you understand that if the blood of an animal can do this, how much more the blood of Jesus Christ? Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. So he tells them, after you have done this, and indeed, when the angel of death came, which was God himself, the Israelite houses were spared. And if you were an Israelite and you did not obey by marking your doorpost with the blood of the lamb, something indeed would have happened unto you. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, let's go to the book of Leviticus chapter 1. We are not going to read the whole scripture. But if you are taking note, I want you to understand. After God did this, he told them, now continue to do this as a, as a commemoration. Do it as often. Remind yourself of this. Remind yourself of what I have taught you. And they kept this ordinance and they continued to do it. And the priest also continued to ensure that the instructions of God were maintained. But you always have to make sure that you bring an animal that has no fault. You couldn't bring an animal with a broken part, with, with, a, with a, a twitched eyes or blind or any defect. That animal has to be clean and perfect to bring it before the Lord. Let's look at Leviticus. Leviticus chapter 1. The Lord called Moses and speak to him from the tent of meeting. He said, speak to the Israelites and say to them, when any anyone among you brings an offering to the Lord, bring bring as your offering an animal from either the hair or the flock. If the offering is a bent offering from the hair, you are to offer a male without defect. You must present it at the entrance of the tent of meeting so that it will be acceptable to the Lord. Amen. Amen. Let's keep it right there. What I want you to understand here is that after what happened in Egypt, now the Israelites had to keep on practicing this. 
And this is done voluntarily. You, 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 don't, you don't have to force anybody to do it if they want to do it. But you are doing it as an atonement of your sin. And I said that the word atonement in Hebrew means to cover. So whenever you do this, the priest will use it to cover your sin. And therefore, God does not see your sins anymore. Now, if you bring the animal before the priest, you have to get this animal, wash the animal for three days, make sure, examine the animal. Then you present the animal to the priest and the priest will also spend time to examine it, kill it, and then sprinkle the blood on the side of the tent to pacify your sin. This was done continuously. I am building a foundation for you to understand what was being done until the time of Jesus. And whenever you kill the animal, then you have to go back and spend that and, 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 and roast the animal with your family. And if there is any left, you have to get rid of it. At that time, they had to use the lamp after they had used the blood. But the, the, the priest would then take it, do whatever he needs to do with it. And plead on behalf of the people that submitted, whether it was for the whole family or for an individual. At that time, they did not have access to go to the Holy of Holies. And it is up to the priest. It was the priest's duty. And I use the word voluntarily. You have to do it. You are not being forced. That is why Jesus does not force anyone to come to him. He said, I stand at the door and I knock. If anyone that is willing to open, when they open, I will come in. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. The, the other thing that I want you to pay attention to is the fact that the animal has to be blameless. Blameless. And then you, you present the blood, but you also do something else with the meat. That is left. Pay attention to that. Now, in, 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 uh, in the New Testament, Jesus says that he did not come to abolish the law, but he came to fulfill the law. John 1 verse 21 says, John saw Jesus walk towards him. And he said, this is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And we have already understood that the lamb was to be used as an atonement to take away the sins of the people. And then Jesus comes, presents himself, and he says that I did not come to abolish the law, but I came to fulfill the law. Now let's look at the book of Matthew chapter 26, reading from verse 17 to 19, and then from, the, uh, from 26 to 28. This is going to be our last scripture, and then we will get into the communion but what i am trying to build is that this time around the lamb has been presented god needed somebody to send and there was nobody and he found his only begotten son for three years that he spent on earth the multitude assessed him they looked at him to find out and to ensure that the lamb was blameless and then he came, when John saw him, he said, this is the Lamb of God, the one who has been sent to come and save us from our sins. So therefore, John the Baptist was confirming the prophecy that was told of so many years ago that a Savior and a Messiah will come. Hallelujah. First lady. Matthew 26, 17 to 19. On the first day of the festival of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, where do, you, where do you want us to prepare the Passover meal of, for you? As you go into the city, he told them, you will see a certain man. Tell him, the teacher says, the time has come, and I, and I will eat the Passover meal with my disciples at your house. So the disciples did as Jesus told them and prepared the Passover meal there. Amen. Amen. Can you please continue from 26 to 28? The same chapter. 
as they were eating, Jesus took some bread and blessed it. Then he broke it in pieces and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this and eat it, for this is my blood. And he took a cup of wine and gave thanks to God for, for it. He gave it to them and said, Each of you drink from it, for this is my blood, which confirms the covenant between God and his people. It is poured out as a sacrifice to forgive the sins of many. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So this was the practice, the Passover. That's why the disciples asked Jesus, it was time for the Passover. And he asked, where should we prepare for the Passover? And in advance, God or Jesus already knew that a place had been set and prepared for him to have that Passover. And he said, this is the last time in which I will have it. For you to really understand where we have come from, we talked about what happened in, um, in Egypt and even in the book of Leviticus where they have to use the blood and still have to use the, the, the meat. But this time around, Jesus Christ sits down and prophetically, he was telling the disciples what was going to happen. He said, this is the last time that I will have this with you. Then he gets up and he broke the bread. And he said, this is my body, which I am broken it into pieces for you. What it means is that very soon, my bones will be broken. Very soon, this body will be broken for you. And indeed, he was beaten by the Roman soldiers to the extent that his bones indeed were broken. The other day, somebody was saying that uh, um, Hollywood could not even express enough I believe that Mel Gibson was able to do quite a good job. But what I have read was that he could not even be recognized, which means that his bones were indeed broken. What he was telling the disciples, what was going to be happening to him very soon. Uh, I, I, I was looking at the rope that was used to beat him up. And the rope has thorns. And how they do it is that they swing the rope, it gets into your skin, and then they pull it. So every whip, if you were getting 39 whips, each single whip gets into your skin and then it rips it off. He said, this is my body. This is how I will be broken in the next couple of hours. The Bible says that, and then he gets up and he picks up the wine. He said, this is my blood. On the cross, he was pierced. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And then he said, by his stripes, I am healed. Let me tell you something. If you have never believed this, please walk away today with the power. That indeed, there is power in what we are doing. Amen. Somebody can go to a fetish priest and then they will give that person a concussion. And the person will go home believing that concussion. How much more Jehovah God? He said... Do this in remembrance of me. It was an ordinance that he gave to the body of Christ. I'm telling you. I don't play around with the communion. Every time I have a communion in my house. And I've shared this testimony many a times. And I don't want to share it again. Because I've said it many times. About what the communion has done. But one time I was praying with somebody. Who was feeling very sick. In New York. And then I said today we are going to have a communion service. I want you to believe that when you take this communion, you will be made whole. You will, feel, you, you will receive your healing. Do you know that there are things that sometimes we say, it, because it is not me saying it. It is me believing it. And then the rest is God bringing to pass what I'm speaking. Are you getting what I'm saying? There is death and life in the power of your tongue. When you speak things, believe that it will happen and it will happen. Some of us, we have come this far by just believing. Because it is not power. It, there's nothing that we have. But I pray that after today, if you have ever taken the communion for granted, I am begging you. I am begging you. I'm on my knees. But there, is, there is absolutely no way that you can be going through a bleeding and touch the one who bled for us and continue to bleed. 
The woman with the issue of blood, there's absolutely no way for her to go back home still bleeding. Because the one who bled for us, you cannot be connected to the one who bled for us and still be bleeding. Amen. Amen. And the Bible says, he gets up and he says that as often as you do this, do this in remembrance of me. What is, what, what, what is Jesus telling us to remember? A couple of weeks ago, I was going through a GI bleed. Nobody in the house knew what I was going through. I didn't tell anybody. And then I went and I picked up the communion. I said, Jehovah God, I declare that as I partake in this communion, let this thing go away in Jesus' name. And I pick up the communion. And I drank the communion. And I began to pray. And I began to pray. And I began to pray. And that was the breakthrough in my healing. Let me tell you, nobody can, no, no, nobody can have a faith for you. I, 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 there are times that we can agree to pray for you. But you need your own faith to be able to do the things that God wants for you. Amen. There are certain times where four friends can come together and lift up a, 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 their friend. And say, so when we present this guy before Jesus, Jesus will be able to heal that person. That is there. There is that corporate faith. But as soon as you accept Christ as your personal savior, by you receiving him, by you accepting him, there is a measure of faith that comes into you. But it is a measure. And you have to build up that faith. The Bible says that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. The fact that I have faith and I believe doesn't mean that there's not going to be times that it will be tough. Those days will come. But the just shall live by faith. The just shall live by faith. It is not vitamins. It is not good food. It is not organic food. It is the just that shall live by faith. It is the just that shall live by faith. When the doctor tells you that this is the report, this is what we have received from you. And then you say, whose report will you believe? And then you walk and you said in the name. They say if the same power that resurrected Jesus from the grave. If that same power lives in me. Then who are you? Who are you? Who are you? Who are you? I don't take it for granted. I don't take it for granted. And I am praying that I don't take it for granted. You know why? He says that whenever I have this, I should remember him. For they that know their God, they shall be strong and they shall do exploits. They that know their God, do you know your God? Do you know your God? It is not about righteousness because when it comes to righteousness, but it's about humility. It's about you going to God and saying, yeah, just as I am, just as I am. That when you wake up every morning and then you know and then you go before God and you say, God, you are the reason why I woke up this morning and not by might. And David knew. David realized that God inhabit the praise of his people. And I, I'm, I'm always passionate about the power of remembrance. The reason is that what are you remembering God for? So whenever you are taking the communion, you are remembering him of the miracles that he did. Is there anything too hard for my God? What I am going through, Jehovah God, as I take this communion, let it happen unto me. As I take this communion, I remember that the blind were seeing, the dumb were speaking, the lame were walking. Ah, as I take this communion, that which were dead were resurrected. Lazarus came out of the dead. As I take this communion, I'm remembering the fact that death could not hold you captive. What are you remembering God for? He was able to take the five loaves, prayed over it and multiply it. So God, I bring you what I have that you will multiply it. As I'm taking this communion, I'm remembering the power that is in you. I don't know what you're going through. 
But I tell you that the Lord said you will not take it back. Amen. Whatever diagnosis, what let me tell you, if we had to walk about what the doctors have said about us, you wake up as this thing, you will carry load, you'll be you will be moody, you'll be crying all the time. Some people go to the hospital and they rather go home with other diagnosis. Because they went and they told them that this is what you have. And instead of praying against it, they accepted it and they went home with it and became a burden upon them. It is my prayer that by virtue of this communion, the Lord will preserve us. We will get through this year. 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 Maya Cabro. Shall we be on our feet? Shall we be on our feet? The Bible says that at that very evening, that last supper, Jesus picked up the bread and he broke it and he says, This is my body. Take it. Whenever you eat this, do this in remembrance of me and in that same manner he picks up the wine and then he said this is my blood whenever ye drink this drink this in remembrance of me as you are drinking the wine and eating the bread I declare this evening that your body will be made whole any inflammation, any pain, any virus in this body dies instantly in Jesus' name. I declare that you and your house will be covered. I declare that any agenda of the enemy by virtue of tonight's communion, they will pass by your household. I pray in the name of Jesus that whatever has been stolen, there shall be a return, pressed down, shaking together, running over, you shall receive a double for any shame. I pray and I command any delays and we drive out any delays in our life in the name of Jesus. I declare that between now and December 31st, you and I shall have a testimony. Our harvest is due. Amen. The season of our harvest is due. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I brought out any handwriting of the enemy. Amen. In the mighty name of our Lord Jesus. Amen. By the blood in Jesus name. Yes, I pray for speed. Yes. I pray for acceleration. Yes. I declare this in the name that is above all names. Amen. That by the mentioning of the name jesus every knee bow and every tongue confess that you are god for death could not hold you captive therefore with this communion we are rising out of any ashes we are rising out of any plan of shame we are rising out of any poverty in the name of jesus we pray and we thank you that our children will excel Every diagnosis on our medical record, every diagnosis on our children's medical record, we wipe it out in Jesus' name. Because on the cross, you took away our sickness. On the cross, you took away my pain. Therefore, I am working out tonight with a clean medical record in the name of Jesus. I wipe away any spirit of heaviness. I wipe away any spirit of sorrow. I wipe away any spirit of bitterness. And I pray that may you be released out of any dungeons of the enemy. Whatever spirit is locking you down with heaviness, I break it in the name of Jesus. May you walk out of this service with the joy of the Lord. That is your strength. Ah, Any blessings that is in stock in this communion, Heavenly Father, as we are partaking in it, as part of your ordinance, oh God, we pray that we will walk out here refreshed. We will walk out here renewed. We will walk out here with the strength of the Lord in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus. 
Whatever is yours, may you take it all back. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. As soon as you take the communion, just begin to thank God. Begin to thank God. Begin. Amen. Did I miss anybody? Mighty dear, God bless you for coming. You're going to be giving a closing prayer. How can I miss you? Please put your hands together for Madam Winifred Kuban to give us the closing prayer. Yes, it's okay. Yes, she said I shouldn't say Kuban anymore. Amen. Please let us be on our feet. Amen. We just want to thank you, Lord. Lord we just want to thank you, Lord. We just want to thank you. In the mighty name of Jesus, we want to thank you for tonight. Amen. And we bless your name for how far you have brought us. Indeed, your word says that no one comes to your presence and leave the same. Daddy Lord, we thank you for your word. We bless your name for your communion. We believe that, Daddy Lord, as we have taken the blood and we have drunk the blood, Daddy Lord, we know Amen. that, Heavenly Father, whatever burden in, in our lives will be released out of us in Jesus', in name. Jesus name. We thank you for tonight, Daddy Lord. We commit the rest of the week into your hands mm. as our children go to school. Daddy Lord, we pray that preserve them and protect them. Yes, we Lord. commit the rest of the week as we go to work and come back. Daddy Lord, we are in your hands preserve us whatever heart desire may you grant it unto us that next week by this time we will come to your presence and give testimonies we'll bless your name in jesus name we pray with thanksgiving amen amen shall we share the grace together may the, may the grace, grace of our lord, lord jesus, jesus christ, christ the love, love of god and the sweet fellowship of the holy spirit, spirit be with, with us now and forevermore. forevermore amen god bless you all amen Hey there, we trust you are truly blessed by the sermon. We would love to see you at one of our services soon. Check out our website at www.changemakersnj.org for all of our contact information, meeting times, and ways you can give to support the ministry. God bless you. Sing with me now. Look at me. Uh.